but that was he was being very systematic in making sure that he got all of the points that he wanted to make. So here we are in under the California Constitution, Article 6, Judicial Section 1. The judicial power of this state is vested in the Supreme Court, Courts of Appeal, Superior Courts, all of which are courts of record. So we can use the California Constitution showing that all courts are a court of record. And then we're going to go to number 16 here, which shows that a court of record is a judicial tribunal having attributes and exercising functions independently of the person of the magistrate. Now, a judicial tribunal means the power to make a judicial determination, right? The, the deciding body. Who makes the de determina judicial determination? Independently of the person of the magistrate, well, the magistrate's the judge, so who would be independent of the judge? that makes the determination, that would be the jury. The jury is the one who decides the law. So we see, independently of the person of the magistrate, designed generally to hold it and proceeding according to the course of common law. Well, in common law, there's no codes and statutes. Codes and statutes don't exist. Legislated law does not exist in common law. It's, you know, the basis of common law is the golden rule, do unto others as you'd have others do unto you. You can charge somebody with trespass if they've violated your rights, and the jury decides whether what you're asking for is legitimate or not. It's acts and proceedings being enrolled for perpetual memorial. That's the record. And in Old England, we think today that the transcriber who makes the a record of what's said in court is making the record, but that's not true in a common law court. In a common law court, the record is only so-and-so sued so-and-so, and the, the determination by the jury was that they were guilty or that they weren't guilty. That's the record. Just that one thing. This is Jones versus Jones, 188 Missouri Appellate, 220, 175 Southwest, 227, 229, ex parte Gladhill, and, you know, Ledwith versus Rosalski. 244 New York, 406, 155 Northeast, 688, 689. And this is out of Black's Law, 4th edition, from 1968, page 426. So this is very powerful stuff because what I'm showing you here is that the California Constitution, and what's the Constitution? The supreme law of the land. You can't have legislated acts that are superior to the Constitution. The Constitution is superior to any legislated act. So if you're saying that the code says this, but the Constitution says this, guess what? The Constitution is superior. So the Constitution says all courts are courts of record in California. All courts. Can there be any court that's not a court of record? No. And a court of record proceeds according to common law. That has to be true. Here are some of the um, common law actions, cause of action. In other words, these are what you can charge somebody with in court. If it's not one of these actions, it's not a common law action. So the first thing right at the top is trespass, an injury committed with force, actual or implied, immediate and not consequential. If property is involved, then property was in actual or constructive possession of the plaintiff. In other words, you're the owner or the tenant at the time of the injury. It has to be physical. Number two, trespass on the case. In practice, the form of action in which a person seeks to recover damages caused by an injury accompanied with force or, of, or which results indirectly from the act of the defendant. Trespass and trespass on the case are supplementary to each other, and it may be said that, in general, trespass on the case lies where no other theory or form of action is available, though it is sometimes concurrent with other forms. Koffler, Common Law Pleadings, from this is a book he wrote in 1969, so it's not like this is ancient history. Three, Trover, in practice, a form of action which lies to recover damages against one who has, without right, converted to his own use goods or personal chattels in which the plaintiff has, 
ha has a general or a special property. In other words, let's say I loaned somebody my television and he decided to sell it. He converted it to his own use, right? Ejectment. In practice, a form of action which possessory titles to corporal hereditament hereditaments may be tried and possession obtained, a form of action which lies against the possession of real property. This would be the same thing as unlawful detainer today. I mean, if you own the property and somebody's sitting there without your permission, ejectment. Five, detinue. In practice, a form of action which lies for the recovery in specie, that's money, of personal chattels from whom one who acquired possession of them lawfully you let your neighbor borrow your lawnmower. He, he acquired it lawfully, but retains it without right. Now you want it back, together with damages for the detention. Six, replevin. In practice, a form of action which lies to regain the possession of personal chattels which have been taken from the plaintiff unlawfully. Seven, debt. In practice, a form of action which lies to recover a sum certain. You owe me $40. It lies wherever the sum due is certain or ascertained in such a manner as to be readily reduced to a certainty without, disre without regard to the manner in which the obligation was incurred or is evidenced. Eight, covenant. We'll go on. Nine, account. Ten, special assumpsit. And eleven, indebted to this assumpsit. But anyway, we see that none of those are, are codes, are they? It's not the penal code, you know, 8620 or something like that. These are all, uh, there's 11 actions in common law, and unless you're charged with one of those 11 actions, you're not in a common law court being charged with a common law crime. See that, so in common law, who's the tribunal? We discussed this before, you know, the tribunal is separate from the magistrate. They make the judicial determinations, so they make a determination of what is law and what's not. So in common law, who's the tribunal? The, the decider of both the facts and the law? It's the jury of your peers. They are the ones who decide the fate of the defendant. Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes in Horning versus District of Columbia, 254 U.S. 135 in 1920, that's the United States Supreme Court decision, quote, the judge cannot direct a verdict if it is true. The judge cannot direct a verdict. Do they do that today? Constantly. They badger the jury into hearing only the evidence they want the jury to hear. They badger the jury into making determinations that they want the jury to make. So the judge cannot direct a verdict. It is true. And the jury has the power to bring in a verdict in the teeth of both law and facts. U.S. Supreme Court in State of Georgia versus Brailford, 3 Dahl 1, 4, quote, It is presumed that the juries are the best judges of facts. It is, on the other hand, presumed that the courts are the best judges of law. But still, both objects are within your power of decision. Once again, he's reiterating what Oliver Wendell Holmes said. You have a right to take upon yourselves to the to judge of both and to determine the law as well as the fact in controversy. Now, you know, we understand jury nullification to some degree. Nullification means avoid the law. Let's say um, a man comes home and he finds that a prison inmate is busy raping his wife and he gets his shotgun and kills him. The jury's going to go, well, the law says you can't kill someone. So you've broken the law, but I would have done the same thing. So I, the law doesn't apply in this case, and we're going to say that you are free to go. I mean, if you can put enough evidence on that that's true. So there's an example where a jury's going to make the determination what the law is. We see that everything is lawfully present when, you're, when it's seen in its true reality. The California Constitution requires common law to be practiced in every court in the state, and the magistrates are unlawfully applying codes and statutes that they have no authority to apply because there's no legislated law in common law. 